Do you ever feel like it costs money to organize? You've got to buy all the things, the drawer organizers, the bins, the boxes, the labels. It really doesn't have to cost a lot to simply declutter. And honestly, that is step one and the most important step of all. Welcome to The Peaceful Home. I'm Teresa Elling. If we haven't met, I've been a professional organizer for over 20 years. I love going into people's homes and helping them be able to declutter and organize and really get their lives back. Don't underestimate the power of decluttering. And it really is the most important step. You can organize clutter, but you will always have to manage it. I've been doing a no spend February 2023 and I am coupling that with decluttering. So I've been going through my home and getting rid of things that I don't need anymore. But today I'm going to show you a decluttering project for a client. And I went through Jen's kitchen with her and this project I believe cost under $10 because the main thing we did was declutter. We ended up running to the dollar store just to get a few small bins. And so this was really cheap and easy. Tip number one is to take before photos or videos. It's really kind of shocking what the after effects can be, but often we forget what it looked like when we started. So taking before photos can help so much. In this situation, Jen has very deep cabinets, which can be great because they hold a lot of stuff, but that stuff can get lost in the back. As you'll soon see, Jen often didn't even know what was in the back of these cabinets, and it's very common. So I'm gonna provide some solutions today that will help. Another thing to keep in mind is that Jen is an avid cook, and she's a really great cook. So she has a lot of different ingredients. She likes to make a lot of different types of cuisine. And so that increases the problem. When you have a small amount of storage space and you love to cook, I uh, did a video for my mom who was in a similar situation. If you love to cook, all the more reason to get organized and to get the clutter out. Know how much time you have to declutter. Do you have 15 minutes a day or an entire day you can devote to this? It's so important that you don't take out more than you can put back in a reasonable time. What is this? Oh. A strawberry hauler? It's too big for that. Huh. What I'm is that? Sure. A melon baller? But it's not a melon baller. What's baller? this thing then? Those are melon ballers. Why is it backwards? You only need one. Sure. And if you don't know what this is, I think it's a strawberry thing. You don't think so? Well, do you use it? No. Then there you go. Good job. Tip number two: start with your drawers. They are the smallest area of the kitchen, and it's a good way to ease yourself into this process. Tip number three is to remove everything. Don't just push things around and pick a couple things out that can go. Take every single thing out. Touch everything. And you'll also want to clean out your drawers and drawer organizers if you have them before you put things back in. Here, Jen is dividing everything into three piles. I call this the ABC method. A's are clear keeps. B's are, you have to think about them, and C's are, they can go, meaning they can be tossed or donated. And all this stuff is up here. Yes. It's probably an indicator that you don't use it very often. For sure. So, um, we'll just start going through the cookbooks. If it's something that you don't use often that you could access online, okay, then you Get can ready. probably donate. Okay. Um, so, why don't I start handing you down things here? I just bought this book because of a friend, and um, I want to know how to pickle better, okay. but I could get online, huh? What would be your tendency? Look up a recipe on Pinterest or go through the book? Oh, um, a recipe on Pinterest. Okay. Just to do it. <laughs> We're not getting rid of very many. Yeah. Oh, those are all A's. These are keeps. Okay. I want those. When's the last time you've looked at these? No, I have not. Okay. I can't. <laughs> I'm going to make this today. Okay. So again, you have to think, if I want to make a cream cheese brownie, am I 
going to look up online or am I going to remember I have no, this? No, I don't remember that. Okay, so I want you to think about that okay. because if the house had burned down. Would I be sad? Right. Would no. you think, oh my goodness, I can't ever get the recipe for no. whatever. No. Not or would a, you oh, not so even the, know? I wouldn't even know. Mm -hmm. It's Foods of the Frontier. Why do I have that? It's cute, but... It's like a beautiful longer burger basket up here. Yes. I wish they had. Oh, they do have the year. 96. Such a beautiful one. Do you have other longer burgers? Oh, I have so many longer burgers. Yeah. That's a longer burger. It's so pretty. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. I love them. Really starting to see them in thrift stores yes. right now. Yes. So, do you get into this? Do you no, know, these are just my mom's recipes. Okay. I have to this to keep. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to display it? Um, I don't, I don't, where? How? Well, so this is something. If it's tucked away in a cupboard, how is that really honoring your mom's memory? Mm -hmm. Do you have other things displayed in your home that make you think of her? Yeah. Is this a crucial memory yeah. enough that you would put it like in a keepsake box and keep it forever? Um, no, actually I just sometimes go through her recipes. Okay. Well, what should I do then? It's really your call. I mean, how often do you go through them? And no, for what that. purpose? I don't know, to see her handwriting. Okay. So you have a couple of choices. Mm -hmm. Save the whole thing, mm -hmm. in which I would say put it in a keepsake box in your storage. Okay. That way you're saying, this isn't something I necessarily use. Mm -hmm. It is to remember my mom. Mm -hmm. That's the purpose of it. Okay. Um, or it's important enough that you find a place to display it in your home or okay. in your cabinet, okay. on your bookshelf. I never even thought of that. Yeah, or you go through, you take a few cards out. Like I have a couple of my grandmothers that I put in a shadow box with the Christmas thing that I did because I wanted to see her handwriting. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. so there's a lot of choices. I think that's a great, and I think that's a really fun Christmas gift for my brother too. Is oh, that would be sweet. Something, be sweet. right? Yeah. Like that? Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Absolutely. I love that you made me think like that. Number four, deal with your keepsake items in the kitchen. They either need to go into a keepsake box or they need to be displayed in your home somewhere. Number five, consider freedom versus choices. Now, an example of this is if I'm hiking up river, I can have the freedom to not take anything with me, but then I don't have choices. What if I want to read a book? What if I want to sit in a chair? What if I want to lay on a raft? If I want those choices, I have to haul all that stuff with me and it doesn't give me much freedom. The same thing is true when it comes to our belongings. The more we have, the more choices we have, but it really keeps us from having a clean, tidy space. We talked about freedom versus choices. Mm -hmm. You know, how much freedom do you want in having easy accessibility, easy yeah. to manage? versus the choices of, um, you know, it just depends on how much you cook, how often you would use something, and is it worth it? Okay. Do you want those choices okay. more than you want the freedom of having that okay. empty space? Okay. Tip number six, make sure you check all of your expiration dates. Now, of course, a lot of these are a purchase by date or a guaranteed freshness date. And so usually the food is good longer than the expiration date, but you still want to be checking these regularly and getting old stuff out of your pantry. Let's go with your top absolute keeps. Oh, oh I love those. Like I just have those. The giant tree. Yes. Okay. Cats. No. Great. One candle. candle. No. Tip number seven, get rid of duplicates. In this situation, Jen is going through all of her cookie cutters and maybe she has three pumpkins, but she only needs one. This is a great example of freedom versus choices. How many choices do you want versus the freedom of a clear space? So you've got super deep shelves, which yes. you already paid. Yes. Um, so the problem is like, do you know what's back here? No. Well, no, I think back we, here. No. So it's not a problem to have things back there if you know what they are. Right. 
So I think for now we need to pull everything out. Okay. And then be really intentional about what we put near the back. Okay. And yeah, in a perfect world, you'd get the big slide out drawers, you know, um, but we can make it work and make sure that things you don't use very often are in the back. Okay. And we'll label so you'll know. Right. Okay. Everything's a keep. Okay. That's this impressive. is the only thing that I don't usually use. Why? So cute. I think because I don't want it to get broken or something. At least took the girls to go do this. Oh, I okay. see. Um, everything I do use. So something I would look at is how can you incorporate that into your Mother's Day? Yeah. Birthday? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's what your cake is on every year for yeah. your birthday. Oh, yeah. That's a you good know, idea. make a plan to use it because wrapped up in a corner... It's I mean, nothing. so the day you die, they go, wow, it's not broken. <laughs> and you never used it. Yes. So right. how did that add to your life? Okay. I'd rather see you use it every year. And in 10 years, if it gets broken, you're sad, but you have memories of actually using it. Yes, that's so, a good plan. So sometimes that's just a way. Like, how yes. can we actually make this part of a tradition? Thank you. Number eight, make a plan to use the things that are important to you. Don't let them waste away in a cabinet. Put it on your calendar so you don't forget. Are these absolute, these are keeps? No, I don't, I hardly use this. Okay. So we'll put it in a B pile for okay. now. This is a keep. Well, I don't really like the shape of that one, okay. but I do use it. I don't, girls, do you guys think I use these? No. What about these? No. You don't like the shape of this one. Does that mean you grab these first? Round ones. I like the smaller round ones. And do you need all three? Not do you use all three at once? Only when I have more. Like if I'm making a bunch of little breads or cinnamon rolls or, okay. or cinnamon like breads. Or, not very often. I don't think I use that one. to go? Yeah. Okay. I never use it. It's brand new. It's so cute, isn't it? It is cute. You just have to decide. It's... What's going to happen is it's going to free up space for you to have to shuffle things around yes. less. Yes. So if you don't use it, I would say. I just brought it in from. So what I love is all this Pyrex. I like that so much better than I like any of the clear stuff. Okay. But I don't have anything matching because I don't have it set. I just have what people gave me from there. Okay. I'll put it aside in the B pile and we'll think about it. Okay. And Something. I don't really like using these because they're hard with no handle. You know, yes, you have to have pop pads. Well, but they're also um, hard to grab. They're slippery, right? They don't have a handle. Right. So I don't love using these. Number nine, don't be afraid to get rid of perfectly good items. If they don't suit you, if you don't use them because you don't like them, pass them on, donate them, and allow someone else to use them. Yes. Um, oh no. Don't really use these. You go for glass. Oh, no, no, I always use these. Oh, you do. Yeah. Okay, so these are all key. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Never have used this, but if I make a look, I don't know what comes in it. <laughs> I feel like if I make a tart, tort, what are they? Mm -hmm. I would. That's pretty. But right. I never have used it. So we will do a either label or piece of paper. With what's um, in there? You could even mount a dry erase board if you want. And this is something that I, you know, I have written down things before when I had cabinets like this. Yeah. Everything in the back, I actually took pictures. Yes. And had them posted. But it's just as easy to write down. But it's interesting the concept that, like, well, I'm not going to write down every single thing I have. Like, if we can't write down everything we have and actually keep track of it, then how are we really stewarding it? And it's inventory. So if it's important enough to keep, I think it's important enough to be able to write down and say this has a purpose and I know where it is. Yes. Okay. That's right. You're right. This is the stuff you know you use. Yes. That's important to you. So this is all going in the back. And we can start a list right now. Number 10. Make a list of the things that are in the back of your cabinets. This way you will always know what's back there. Post it right on the inside of the cupboard door 
And this will also help your family to know where to put things away. The thing that you can do is we can switch these drawers up. You can, they're all movable. Oh yeah, put beans at the very top, the ones you don't use, and have your tea, like you just pull out a oh. bin and there's all your tea. Yeah. You know, rather than stuff that can get shut. So we could do a switcheroo that way too. Yes. Number 11, be willing to be a little untraditional in your storage. In this case, Jen was used to putting her rice and beans together. That's how we find them in the grocery store. Yet she uses rice frequently and rarely uses the dried beans. So the beans really should go somewhere tucked away where they can be accessed, but they don't take a prominent spot. The same thing would be with like peanut butter and jelly. If you use peanut butter all the time, but rarely jelly, don't let jelly take up the prominent spot. Number 12, have a friend declutter with you. This is incredibly helpful. It just is so nice to have someone with an outside perspective be able to look at your stuff who doesn't have an emotional investment in your things. We lost some of the after footage, but here's a little bit of it for you to take a look. I want to thank Jennifer for allowing me to film in her kitchen and this entire decluttering process and then to allow me to make this video. She did such an amazing job. She was committed to the process and willing to answer all the hard questions. Well, I hope that offered a little bit of inspiration and encouragement for you to tackle your own project. Remember, if you haven't done this before or you really struggle, I encourage you to start small, one drawer, one cabinet, and get a friend. Have someone come alongside you who can be that voice of reason in your head, who can ask those questions, which by the way, I just did a video on the 12 questions I ask clients when we declutter. And I went through all 12 of them with examples, so I will post that video below. Thank you so much for joining me today on The Peaceful Home. Have a great day.